God, this naming issue is so freaking terrible. You're gonna call me just call me Tom. If you can call me anything, and then you can just call me out. I was singing again, wasn't I? Oh, well, welcome to the Hobo. And hopefully one day to have a girlfriend show. I've had to change it a little bit. Um, again, I'm always working on that. Alexa Bliss. And Mandy Rose. And Kyrie Sane. And I think Oscar's already seen someone. Because while there's no more staring lustfully at Becky Lynch. Where if Billy Kay's available? Indeed. But wait a second, that's that's my issue. I'm gonna talk about some wrestling. And again, SmackDown was weird. Um I won't say a bad weird. I like a little frazzle. There we go. A little bit better looking. But SmackDown was was interesting. Um, let's get to it because I'm kind of busy because I know tomorrow I have to wake up at seven. Still have to go to the gym tonight. The hobo, a nap, interview, nap, nap or grocery shop. Oh, I don't know. And then work, and then gym. Wait, I see a pattern arising. And then work, nap, work, work. Is it work, gym, or gym? Oh, wow, it is. Work, 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 gym. Work, bank, work, work. Oh, I have stuff to do. So let's get right to SmackDown. Again, the one and only hobo Tom one day, well, not that chair will be filled. But I guess this chair will be filled. So I'm getting a new chair. Yes. No, because I think that chair's, I broke the pneumatics. I think I had that chair for. Wow, I think, wow, 12, 12 years? Wow, that's impressive. This chair I think I've had for 10 years. And I just got my work schedule for June, which I'm not impressed with. So let's talk about some SmackDown. Taking some views on this. And that would be good, because that way it can be sponsored. And I wonder what homesteading is. That has to do with like farm animals. Still need a job for that. Uh, so SmackDown starts with Roman Reigns comes out. Just kind of give a recap of Raw. Then he uh, pulls a intro for The Miz, and he starts singing a bad Oasis song to the dismay of all the Brits across the pond. Well, everyone across the pond. Um, then Elias and Shane come out. They run the ring. Um, eventually, they, of course, they did not come alone. They brought Daniel Bryan and Rowan with them. And they didn't have their tag belts with them. I guess they're getting new tag belts made. I don't know. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens when I do my predictions. And then, of course, the Usos make the saves. And we saw the flying Usos onto Rowan and Daniel Bryan. That was awesome. So that actually leads into the first match. Where it's a fatal four way between Randy Orton, Mustafa Ali, I'll always say their whole name, Andrade Cien Almas, and Finn Balor. And for some reason, wow, those entrances were taking forever. Um, Ali and Finn start off, and again, it's a very face versus face match. Eventually, Orton comes in. 
Orton gets involved. I think Ali goes to the outside. Orton pulls him down, bashes Ali against the table, bashes Finn against the table. Andrade. Why? Because then Andrade got bashed against the table. And if this was ECW, Lena Vega would have gotten bashed against the table. Oh, and Randy Orton did a mic drop, too. That was, that's always called a mic drop. Bam. And Selena Vega is still so short, no matter how tall they make her hair, no matter how far Roddy walks in front of her, she's tiny. And then eventually, <laughs> uh, Randy Orton gets in the ring. Those stomps. So good. Denali can sell them pretty good. It's pretty easy, though, to sell a stomp. You have to clutch whatever Renyorn was trying to stomp at, I guess. Um, again, there was a, I think the only thing is that there was a weird fan of an RKO, which is kind of cool, because um, Ali went up to the top, faked like he, he was going to jump. Renyorn said, ah, I, I can hit it. So he went for the RKO. Eh, eh. Ali had that, Ali had that scout out. Um, then he, like, jumped on to Andrade, and then Andrade, and this might, this is a really minor quibble, only because it happened. I know Andrade does have his outfit, and he's supposed to dress a certain way, but he really should have came out in a mask, preferably silver and black. Again, just a little tribute to Silver King wouldn't be bad. I think he was in WWE, like, once or twice. But even as another Mexican luchador, I mean, there is the respecto. But again, I guess Andrade is a true rudo. Whereas I am hobo. El hobo. El hobo. Not El Vagabundo dos Hobos 447. Dislike him. Um, again, that's a minor quibble of mine. It was, for the most part, I mean, this was a f amazingly fun match. I mean, eventually it did turn to the classical spot fast. Andrade pointed at that ladder, though. And the other thing that happened is that... Wait, that's right. Andrade did. He pointed the ladder. He went to go get ladders. Which violates the table rule. And the table rule is he who brings up the tables goes through the tables. So obviously, if Andrade brings up the ladders, you know the ladders are going to get used on Andrade. Because Ali grabbed them and just started beating people with the ladder. That was so good. Um, again, Andrade got hit with the ladder. Um, he had the ladder spot. He got tossed onto the back of the ladder. Whap, whap. People with ladders. Finn won by roll up. In a really, I mean, this was a this mismatch at everything. Finn is the master of roll ups. He's master of la magistro. I'll tell you what. In watching the match, that's right. He is. Something I forget. Then there was an RKO chance. Again, Finn won with a roll up. Finn is the ma Finn Balor is the master of the roll up, folks. And really, what I thought was a flaming on match. And I thought it was really that good. Andrade did the, did the dumb thing. He actually brought up the ladder. He he disposed of Finn. He was upset. I dropped him on the ladder, put the ladder. He went to go climb up the la climb up said ladder. Ricochet broke the number two rule in a ladder match, especially in Money in the Bank match. Jumped. Oh, that's right. He jumped. So he's running down the ramp. Jumped onto the ring apron. So he's here. To here. To the top rope. To the ladder. Knocked Andrade off, 
And I don't think Ricochet's winning because he just had his Money in the Bank moment where he left with the Money in the Bank briefcase. Doesn't he watch WWE? Jeez, that's, that's, that's not good for Ricochet. Well, Ricochet's not winning it. Again, overall, it was still a fun match, though. And the ending was pretty good. Ricochet got his moment. And I'll make my predictions on Thursday as to who's actually winning Money in the Bank. And then it gets kind of dead time. And there was a selfie video for Carmella. Again, holding the phone up here with it having faced the, her cleavage. A lot of women like to do that for some reason. I know for selfies, it's like, hey, every day you selfie myself. Look at my boobies. Boobies. <laughs> that still makes me chuckle. Wow, my beard is really going great, too. I haven't been to work for five days at my other job, dealing with people. So I've gone super hobo. Now, I wonder if people at gym will recognize me. Um, then Charlie came out with a promo. Lacey Evans was there. For some reason, I cannot get excited about Lacey Evans, and the crowd is kind of confused. It's up to me. I would have lost Lacey Evans and NXT to save with the Forgotten Sons. And for really one whole hour, there's only one match. I know it's the go home show, but I don't know. Again, there's a lot of dead air. Or, well, not so much dead air, but. And then to start off the second uh, hour, um, you have the next match Shane, Elias, Daniel Bryan, and Rowan get in the ring. And this is the one thing that the WWE did, which is beginning to annoy me a little bit. They're having these prolonged entrances where after one team or per one person or team enters the ring, they have like a cutaway promo because they did like an Alistair Black bard thing. I think he was doing the spoken word to a song. I have no idea what it was. He just referenced the bard. Of course, that's William Shakespeare. That always gets a cheap pop. It's just weird, though. Just called them the jumping bomb hobos. That's going to be my title for this video, and you'll, you'll find out why. Because WWE Creative needs to, needs to listen to the hobo, I think. So, but in this match, uh, Shane versus Shane and Elias and Daniel Bryan and Rowan take on the Usos and Roman Reigns. Remember, if the Miz interferes, it's a four on three, so the cage match is over. Again, um, the, the announcer is making more of this match than it kind of. The announcing team sucked for this match. I know they're supposed to have banter, and it's supposed to be lively, but the banter between Corey Graves and Brian Saxon. Was way too much. I mean, it was just back and forth constantly, calling each other stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. I mean, that really took away from what uh, what utterly was a fun match, and I actually and I actually gave it probably a higher rating in spite of what the announced team made of it. I mean, Tom Phillips, thank you. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. And that's only because... I'll fix that later. I don't feel like stopping. That's only because Tom Phillips just kept on going. So he was being the professional there. Um, those chops, though, are so fun. Um, the knee spot was good. The ref actually called because Daniel Brown was going to make a tag and, like, Elias tagging. You could hear that. Again, that live mic is both great. It's a curse and a blessing. It gives people on the outside a chance to listen in. Unfortunately, you don't need to know everything, though, sometimes. And for some reason, Graves just does not like Brian Saxon. And Brian Saxon does not like Corey Graves. Again, you could hear that. I mean, that's what I really take away from this match, besides the fact that Rowan's a beast. I mean, he's just a bruiser. I mean, he just, at one point, he just dragged. Jay Uso. The only reason I remember that is one wrote that down. 
And two, Tom Phillips was keeping pace with the action. Thank you, Tom Phillips, for doing her job. And you just literally him by his foot. Um, eventually, Roman does get the hot, does get the hot thing. Yeah, yeah Phillips, Tom Phillips is saving this. Because if not, it's going on a very slippery slope. She kind of continued it to some degree. Actually, it took away a lot from her. Um, Roman Reigns got, gets a hot tag. And then for some reason, Roman did not like it when Elias tagged himself in, that blind tag. Roman's like, he just looked at him funny. And I have that funky feeling. Again, whatever tag the Usos, again, you just, you just blind tag yourself in. Normally doesn't bode well. But just wait. And then, amazing, their tag team work, their, 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 their double teams are amazing. The stereo super kicks, uh, the kick to the splash. Everything they do is so smooth. Again, being twin brothers probably has something to do with that. Roman Reigns, uh, he is a cousin of theirs. I'm sure that kind of helps things out a lot. And Roman's headbutt is actually more powerful than a Samoan headbutt. So it's in the order of headbutt power. Scottish headbutt. Techno Viking headbutt. And then Samoan headbutt. Wow. Never would have thought that. Um, but eventually, Elias hits the drift away on one of the Usos and gets the pin. Shane did, did, Shane did do a coast to coast. Again, another spot fest. It wasn't bad, but. I think the thing that did it, it would have been better if there wasn't all the banter between Graves, Graves and Saxon. Thumbs down. They kind of ruined the match. And it was actually really fun. In fact, it was so fun, this was a surf and turf match. And then the next match, oh, um, then the Miz runs out. He's smart because again, if the Miz interfe if the Miz interfered in the match, he no longer have a steel cage match. So he waited till the end, brought the steel chair, cleared cleared the ring. Good stuff by the Miz, smart. Uh, Rowan just got crushed too. Then um, next you have the Firefly Funhouse. <laughs> what did I say? Should have uh, something should have been. Oh, I know what that is too. But whatever. Um, then the next match, and I'm kind of scribbling the stuff stuff down. So the dash should have been. No, something about a shirt. Something. Then we have Kairi Sane and Asuka. The Kabuki Warriors? Really? You thought the Viking experience got, got poo-pooed on. WWE, you don't want to see what's going to happen to this. But they took on... Mm, Way too closely shaves Mandy Rose and boosts Sonya Deville. The Iconics are there. The Fire and Desire versus the Kabuki Warriors. Fire and Desire, I get. Kabuki Warriors. Just bring back the name Jumping Bomb Angels. These old guys like me know who they are. This is the terrible name names. The Iconics were ringside. And once the crowd heard the Kabuki Warrior name, they just died. Although I'll I'll I'll, I'll give them that I'll give WWE credit. I will poo poo WWE and I will give the WWE credit. I do like their mashup. I've Kyrie Sane's and Asuka's theme music. 
I just hate their tag teaming. That's unless you know. Wait, weren't they? Geisha. Why do I think Kabuki was was like a theater troupe though? Also, take a look at my book. Indeed. Um, again, the name killed the match because the crowd just went, what? Um, for the most part, it was really this an elongated squash match. I mean, Kyrie Sane slapped, slapped the hair off of Mandy Rose. I know how, how neat me Mandy gets down there now. Um, I do like the fact that Kyrie Sane did do a Brazilian jiu-jitsu move to get out of the lug lock. She kind of kicked her own leg. Very tough to do. And effective as Sonya Deville. She, I guess she has a good spine buster. Boo Sonya Deville. That's what I still think. Um, eventually, Deville was going to go for a pin onto Asuka. Asuka tried to get the Asuka lock on after beating up Mandy Rose a lot. Um, Deville interfered. Deville got, I guess, a hot tag. Mandy Rose saw that Deville beat up Asuka enough. And Asuka won with a reverse roll-up. Hubris. Sonya Deville. Well, Sonya Deville. Mandy Rose. Like the kiss of the rose. Like that was a seal song. Kiss on the kiss of the rose on the grave. Wow, I am old. Um, so I'm not even gonna say the name. How are you saying an Oscar one? Kabuki Warriors. So much fanfare. The iconics are nothing but talk through the whole match. And they made it more on them. Granted, they great, they're great at talking, but when you start to take away from the match and the Kabuki Warrior thing, and you're like, huh? It was a ham sandwich. And then for the Kevin Owens show, um, let's see. Oh, they had some other people come in, Bailey. Yeah, she gave her, th her thing. Um, Kalea was going to do a large promo, but actually looked absolutely terrified and just left. That was the Kevin Owens shows. Um, Kofi steals the spotlight. He goes in the ring first, starts to call it Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens eventually does come out, starts to beat up Kofi Kingston, says, oh, you're no longer, you don't have your buddies anymore. I'm going to beat you up now. This is what it's like to be by yourself. Um, Xavier Woods comes out, and then Sami Zayn came out, and it was, and it was a fun swerve, which kind of took away from my one prediction for Money in the Bank, though. Although it still could happen. And that was SmackDown. The wrestling was amazing. The commentary, and it just seemed long because of the promos. Overall, I thought it was good. If you get through the promos and, and just the banter on commentary, they just took a really good product and it went from thumbs to quote Sammy Callahan. It went from thumbs up, thumbs down. And that was SmackDown. So that was a weird go home show. Um, again, some other notes the 18th. So on Thursday, Thursday the 16th, I'm going to have my predictions, although I kind of spoiled my predictions, or they spoiled it for me. I have to fill that out. Well, Dr. Tom's going to be busy working my work, because God knows I'm not good at it. And the 18th, one of three things is going to happen. One, there's going to be nothing. Or one, there's going to be a recap show of Double or Nothing. Or I'm going to do a live, sh a kind of taped show of NXT Live from Sanford and do the double or nothing. Or I might not do anything. It kind of hinges to, to if I work on Sunday or not. And not, not my at home job, but my actual job I have to go, I have to actually go physically too. So on Sunday, I'm going to be doing Money in the Bank. It all depends when, and that when is if I'm working or not. I'll find out more tomorrow. 
the first Thursday with more detail. It will be Monday SmackDown, Tuesday, no, Monday Raw, Tuesday SmackDown. And then that's Saturday. We might have a girlfriend sighting. <laughs>